this is our 50th show, ladies and gentlemen, and still we're figuring it out. Uh, that means, what, I'm in LA for 50 days? Wow, I came in with an irrational fear of parking and getting a car, parallel parking especially. Now I've added coyotes to the list as of yesterday. Yay! Oh, yeah. We're on TV. <laughs> I'm more interested in the price of the chains, who owns them, and whether or not when you're giving it to a guy like Taylor Heineke or any guy, something that's so valuable, do you sit on the plane comfortably? Do you fall asleep? Do you think you're getting it? I would be nervous about that. Nobody on this staff after 50 episodes is trusting me <laughs> with the chain. I saw your charger yesterday, Marissa. I walked off with, this is your charger. I almost texted you, but I knew I'd see you today. All right, this is our show, The Coffee Machine. The Keurig is really making noise here. Uh, it's a little bumpy in studio because the basketball show was in here and then it switches to us. And so um, we're fumbling the ball a little bit, but that's okay, we're gonna figure it out. So let's do this because we have to talk about last night because there were chains, there was a bush light, I'm a Budweiser gal, but we'll forgive Heineke for that because all the players love him. Uh, and some soon-to-be Midnight Jordans, apparently, for one Heineke. Uh, I mean, there's also a Heineken quick marketing ploy there that they did. The bush light was certainly a miss there. Uh, but it's a big day in the NFL because this team that I had circle, I mean, come on, LaShawn came on yesterday and said they're not going to lose till when? New York, week 14? And the Eagles are no longer undefeated. No team is undefeated, thanks to that man with the chains and not with the Heineken. He was clutch on third down. It helps Washington hold the ball for more than 40 minutes. 40 minutes! That's why Washington won this game. 40 minutes. My parlay busted. Of course it did. The defense, guys. This Washington defense forced four turnovers from a Philly offense that had just three on the entire season coming into tonight. And Joey Sly was an absolute machine, booting four field goals, including one from 55 and 58 yards away. And when the schedules came out in the spring, this game was circled on the calendar as Carson Wentz's big return to Philly. And instead, it was Heineke's chance to make a statement. He sees the opportunity and has done so right now. And he's the guy who's energizing this team with his play, with his antics. I mean, the roughing the passer celebration last night. Unbelievable, brutal start to the season with Wentz. This was so fun. <laughs> what is he doing? I love it. Uh, He's celebrating and I love it. The commanders are three and one in Heineke's four starts, three and one. You kind of just got to put your hands up and say, all right, enjoy the ride. Enjoy what's going on here. Uh, they're in, right in the thick of the NFC playoff race right now at five and five, a half game back of the Niners for the final wild card spot. So I don't know if they can go back to Wentz at this point. I, I guess there's a discussion to be at. How can it not be Heineken's job? Heineke, Heineken's. <laughs> <laughs> How can it not be Heineken's job? I'd like to hear from fans, actually. Is there, are there Commanders fans that are standing for Carson Wentz? Are there NFL fans who want Carson Wentz to get? What is the conversation being had at the, uh, the old water cooler with Deborah from accounting this morning? Let me know at Up and Adam Show. And the ripple effect, by the way, for the Eagles, it should not be understated because not only is the number one seed in the NFC still very much in play for both Philly and Minnesota sitting at eight and one. But the Giants are now only a game back of the Eagles for the division as well. Carry the one, check the weather, do the math, all of that. And that's amazing. Those teams still play each other twice this year. So am I going to overreact to the Eagles loss? I didn't, we had a nice group meeting this morning. I had to pick Marissa up off the floor. She was crying, I like, tripped on her tears. It was a whole thing. But uh, I think what we all came up with as a family on our 50th episode is that it was just one of those bizarre games that they probably win nine times out of 10 if you play it over and they had an extra day to do it, but they will be fine. And this is all about just crediting Washington. Ron Rivera in the locker room, a beautiful, powerful moment. He talks about his mom and how proud she would have been of that team. He's fighting tears, uh, which is amazing. By the way, fighting the tears thing, like I, I, we're gonna talk about Derek Carr here in a second. The weirdest thing I've seen on Twitter, and Twitter's a weird place. 
Twitter is a weird place. Is this, uh, I'm just going to go on a soapbox here for just a second, sorry. Uh, Derek Carr emotional at the at the post-game press conference. Of course he is. And there's so many tweets that are like, get him up, toughen up. Like, wh- are we really or in 2022? Oh, bad luck on any Twitter egg avatar out there that pays eight bucks a month for their little verified check mark saying that they, that we're shaming tears and emotion in locker rooms now at podiums at whatever. Not a fan of that. Okay, let's bring in a guy I am a very big fan of. Oh, really quick. Oh, there's Darius. Are we are we good to go? Is everything okay over here on this side of the studio? How are we doing over here? Are we doing okay over here? You're motioning to her. What kind of, we're doing signals. We're okay. Okay, we are good. And there is Darius Butler, Patriots Colts legend, uh, here with us, Man to Man podcast, of course, tweeting things about Ferrari and F1 this morning that I just agree with blindly because I don't know crap about it. Smart, smart. Good move, Kay. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Kay. How you doing? I'm so good. Uh, I just went through the Washington side of things. Should be celebrated, of course. I know you're a big Heineke guy. I want to ask you, am I wrong about the Eagles? Is this one, you know, like when the Bills lost to the Vikings, you can point to some things. Red zone interceptions, four for Josh Allen. He's not 100% healthy. But is there a reason with this Eagles team that I should be looking at them differently after the loss? Oh, uh, no. Nah. Shouldn't be concerned. This was a, a, a divisional game, a uh, primetime game. The commanders, they showed up. They played ball. They um, controlled the line of scrimmage, obviously ran the ball well, kept Jalen Hurts in that offense on the sideline. And most importantly, they won the turnover battle. That was an area that the Eagles were dominating uh, coming into this game. Uh, it helped tremendously in that 8-0 start, but they lost the turnover battle, I believe, 4-2. to two. And that's huge, especially when that other team, when they're getting the ball, they're controlling the clock. They're running the ball. They were 12 for their first 16 on third downs. And then obviously it came down to that uh, late hit from Brandon Graham. But um, I wouldn't panic from this one. I think the Eagles will be just fine. Uh, they, they beat some good teams this year already. And I think they'll, you know, this loss may be, may, be, may be a good thing for them at this point in the season. And obviously the Dolphins fans down here can celebrate and they can pop those uh, champagne bottles right. that 1972 team. You know, I'm not popping. We have champagne. If I'm not kidding, Darius, we have champagne in studio, in a bucket, ready to go. I have like those safety goggles. I have a tarp. I, I've done about three or four parlays now over at FanDuel's. None of them hit. I'm cr- so I'm beginning to think Fade the K should be the new segment here. Those parlays are tough. And yours, I mean, it was, it was yours looked smooth. Like it was, I thought that was the damn near guarantee. <laughs> Mine was a little, a little tough for I had five legs. But um, you never know. Any given Sunday in this league, it's, it's tough to get them. But uh, we'll get them. Okay? You got to stick to it, okay? Stick I to it. I think I'm cursed. Like, I think a good segment on the show might be some sort of, you know, ayahuasca sort of uh, stage fest exorcism, something. Something needs to get. Because, come on, you, I couldn't get 40. It was 40 rushing for Miles Sanders, 40 through the air for A.J. Brown, and 200 passing yards for MVP, almost lock, Jalen Hurts. It was crazy and I think I'm cursed so Eagles fans and Marissa I know you're I know you're thinking it so I just said it for you I know you're thinking it's my fault okay so we've uh, passed the halfway mark of the NFL season we got to talk about the Colts we got to talk about week 11 of course but I thought it'd be a good time as any to sort of check check in on these stupid bold predictions that I made before the season so Hamilton put this together I have not yet looked at it I of course said these things back in August but kind of don't remember them so uh, (laughs) I just want you to sort of go through them with me as a family and take a look all right so here's my preseason predictions Justin Herbert wins MVP okay well the rib situation Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, that kind of throws a wrench in that. What do you think? That was a good one. I was right there with you. He was my preseason MVP pick, I believe, as well. So that, that's not a bad one at all. Like you said, missing some, some pieces, but, you know, no excuses, no explanations. Okay, thank you. Oh, I like that. All right, let's good go back one. to Allen. Pull that one. list back up for me. So then we got, oh, well, this is not good. This is not good. Derek Carr will lead the league in passing. Okay, we're going to circle back to that one. The Vikings make the playoffs. I mean, let's not start celebrating too soon, but that one looks pretty good. And Jameis wins for Gill, comeback player of the year. I mean, he'd he'd pretty much have to come back this week and win every game he plays for the rest of the year to have a chance at catching uh, a Geno Smith or a Saquon Barkley, but I'm going to ask Mark Ingram. Or, or Brian Robinson. Yeah. Brian Robinson, he got shot early this year, and he, he scored a touchdown last night. I think he's actually going to lock that award up. I loved, yeah, I love giving uh, him getting, I love him getting love on this show. He was getting love uh, post game as well from NFL media. You love to see that. Uh, yep. And then, and Mark Ingram is on the show, and we'll ask him. I ask him every week about Jameis, and he tells me, he finds a different way to tell me absolutely no information. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's quite a talent. He's incredible at it. Uh, and then there's the AJ Brown trade, will be considered the best move of the offseason. That's the next ones, right? What do you make of that? You, you were with me on that. 
I, I was with you. Love the AJ Brown move, and obviously that that's looking like a great move. But that Tyreek Hill to Miami is obviously, for obvious reasons, my favorite move of the offseason. But uh, AJ Brown, a lot of season left, and they only lost one game thus far. Um, a lot of people still have him at the top of the league and power rankings and things like that. So that move is great. The Vikings one, like you said, you can pop some champagne bottles on that one. <laughs> Jameis. Can we please? I'm in the mood. Can we actually grab a champagne? Do we have anything cold? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, I would like some Jameis. champagne. And then the, uh, what was the, the other cold. one? Um, the, uh, what? The, the Derek Carr. Derek Carr leading yeah. the league in passing yards. Now, on paper, you got Devontae Adams, you got Hunter Renfro, you got Darren Waller on paper coming into the year, you got yeah. Josh McDaniel calling the plays. Yeah. That looked like a good deal, but those four people have only been on the field less than 10% of the snaps right. offensively this year. It's so not my fault. It's not, it's not my not fault. fault. We're going to okay. get back to Derek Carr because I want to go a little deeper on that one. Then we had, uh, I had Lamar pulls a Flacco. He stays healthy, bounces back, and gets paid. I mean, still to be determined on the paycheck, but the Ravens are in first place in the North at 6-3. and three. I think this is a Super Bowl-bound yeah. team. AFC team that's never won a Super Bowl gets a ring. So the Titans and Bills, they are right now the only two AFC teams in playoff position that haven't won a Super Bowl yet. All right, that could happen. You could have just been like everybody else can. <laughs> just said the Bills are going to win the Super Bowl. Listen, just... the Bills can't get a division win. I don't look dumb for saying that at all. All right, Mitchell Trubisky starts every game this season. Womp, womp. I and... could have saved you on that one. Yeah, yeah that was, I'm an idiot. Okay, and I just can't I can't quit people when they're, you know, down and out. I want to, like, like Tua. Tua, everyone's criticizing Tua, and that was my last one, that he's going to prove everyone wrong, and that's where I want to sort of get deeper here. Here's a little peek at a case that I built for to a before the season. Take a look. Gotcha. Tyreek, Waddle, creative coach, revamped run game that should be running all over the field, including this week against the Patriots, who I don't think can handle the speed of what's going to go on there with Miami. I think he shuts everyone the hell up. I love Tua. I believe in him. Let's go! Last time Miami Dolphins started, <laughs> like yeah. It. Last time the I Dolphins. like the energy. I love it. Tua is proof. I had, a, I had a Miami Dolphins take, too that you even might have called me crazy on. If they have it, can we go back to that clip on, on, on the, the AFC East? Oh! And the AFC East. Are really, really high for the Dolphins. Um, high enough for me that I may even sprinkle something on them to win that division. I know everybody's high on the bills. Talk to me. And I am as well. Josh Allen, Diggs, you know, you brought Von Miller, Von Miller over. You lose Brian Dayball, though, so there, are, there is some question marks there. So I may sprinkle something on uh, the Dolphins winning that division. I had to spring a little something on it. So, we're hey, going back we're, to 2012. And everybody was kind of, it was you know, two was split. And people had questions, you know, it, and it was fair. You know, you, you saw that the offense was terrible the year before. It was super elementary, had no protection, didn't have great weapons, didn't have a great system. You bring McDaniels over, you bring Tyreek over, you sure up the offensive line, and look at him now. He's at the top of the league in all the passing, yeah. passer rating uh, categories. So vibes are really, really high down here in Miami right now going into the bye week. It's true, yet somehow everything that you just said is true. The Dolphins are 7-0 and when he starts and finishes the game. He's one of the top five single-season passer ratings in NFL history. But I don't think that my prediction where he'll shut everybody up has happened. I think that there's still doubters. There's still people that need to see a little bit more, and I can't wait for him to show that down the stretch in this first season there with Mike, or with uh, Coach McDaniel. All right, then there's, uh, you know, the one that got me, the one that I want to dig into before we hit a break here, uh, you know, you, you give Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, maybe it's cute and I love like a rom-com or something or bromance and it's like, oh, you get them together, college, I got, it was very cute. And I thought, you know, like offensive-minded McDaniels, like he's going to ball out. Well, why yeah. has it not worked? You look at this, Carr is throwing, ugh, for his fewest yards per game since his rookie season. He's on track to have his worst passer rating, Darius, since 2017, so uh, not great, not great. It's just not clicking for some reason. Obviously, injuries uh, play, play a huge role in this. But, um, you know, Brandon Marshall, I saw Brandon Marshall on here, I believe, last week. He had a yeah. lot to say about Coach McDaniels in that head coaching role. And obviously, he would have more experience um, personally with him there. But uh, maybe that has something to do with Maybe he's just a better a guy that's better suited to just drawing up plays and getting the offense ready to go out there and execute. Um, but it, it's just not meshing. And, and you heard Derek Carr come out and talk after the game, last game, after he lost to our Colts in Jeff Saturday's debut. You heard Devontae Adams come out and echo some of the yes. same sentiments of guys just not being totally bought in. And there was a lot of moving parts there. 
new defensive coordinator, new offensive coordinator, new weapons. Uh, but for some, you got guys retiring midseason. Um, it's just not working for, for whatever reason. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if he uh, really survives this year. We'll see if he does. Uh, and, of course, you mentioned Jeff Saturday, so we'll take a short break. More with Darius Butler after this. We'll get in to the Colts, a player coach. That's in the future for Mr. Butler here. We'll also go to Shutdown City next. FanDuel Casino has a special offer for new players out 21 or older with FanDuel Casino's Play It Again. You can play your favorite casino games and get up to $1,000 back if you do not win. It means you can play Blackjack, Wheel of Fortune, Live Dealer Roulette, and more. And if you don't win, you'll get up to $1,000 back to play it again down with FanDuel Casino today as we welcome back in our guy, Darius Butler, after this. The Packers are coming back, man. It's a long season. There's seven in a row if you can't count. How about those cheese? Hey, one, baby. Ooh, All this team does is know how to win. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm getting really emotional right now. It's been a rough. Yeah. I'm proud of our team found a way to win when we're not doing our best. I appreciate the shit out of you guys. Best football's out in front of us, but let's keep grinding. Great job today. Way to find a way to get a win. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. 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 Did they forget the Colts locker room in there? I didn't see that in the best locker celebrations, but I see a Colts. Haters. Haters. Not me. Not me. Don't come after me, Pat McAfee. Don't come after me, Darius Butler. I just sit here and ask the questions. Unbelievable. Uh, throw K, throw up and Adams on the clip. We got a clip. We're taking shots at everybody that took <laughs> shots at us. <laughs> I didn't. I, did, I was not one of those people. And I had Brandon Marshall come on and also say he was behind Jeff Saturday. I know you said it. You were, uh, you know, it, why knock somebody down that's trying? going to try to do the best of an opportunity is sort of the sentiment that I'm getting from around the league. And so let's get into it. He uh, leads your Colts to a win. And you like the hire, I know, in terms yeah. of opening the door for former players. Not everyone was pro Jeff. So what did you see as far as Jeff's impact and why everyone should maybe turn the tide for week 11? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely understood some of the reaction. I think some of the reaction was definitely over the top. Um, a little egregious, some might say. But um, I love the hire because Jeff, you know, it wasn't like Jeff Saturday is just some random guy who came through and, and had a cup of coffee with the coach. Like, mm -hmm. he was there for a long time. Obviously, he's had a long, long relationship uh, with uh, the owner, Jim Ursay. And he was a leader. He was the vocal leader on that team through those dominant years, winning 12, 13 games a year. So um, as a job, as a head coach, it's actually an easier job coming in midseason than being like a coordinator or a position coach. Like your job is to come in there and kind of galvanize that locker room, you know, lead men, make them believe, you know, regardless if things are going well, things are going terrible. You got to get everybody on the same page and ready to show up and play. And guys are ready. Um, I said, I mm. tweeted out before the game even started. This was the most excited I have been for a coach kickoff all year. And you just saw the energy from jump. First quarter, we go down and put points on the board. Jonathan Taylor got going. Matt Ryan ended up getting the start. Uh, Parks Frazier calling his first game in the NFL um, as a 30-year-old guy with no experience. Uh, I'm even more impressed with what he did than even what Jeff Saturday did on that sideline. You know, balance attack, over 200 yards passing, over 200 yards rushing. It was against the Raiders, so I won't get too, too excited. Uh, but uh, those guys, Jeff Saturday, Parks Frazier, and that whole team, that whole organization, you know, they get A-pluses yeah. across the board from me. And I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking forward to how they finish the season. How do you think it went down? Because, I, you know, seeing how Matt Ryan played, it's like, duh. He should be in there. And I doubt yeah. Jeff Saturday was like, yeah, I'll come do this and be like the pinata without having some say in it or conversation. Yeah. How did it go down? Because the move was really interesting to go back to Matt Ryan. Yeah. Uh, when I, I, when I spoke on a Pat show. I spoke on my podcast, Man to Man Pod. And I said, look, Jeff Saturday is taking this job. I would bet my last dollar that Matt Ryan, I didn't expect this week. But I knew Matt Ryan at some point soon would be back in there because you didn't want to deal with all of those moving parts. You got a young guy, Sam Ellinger, who's unproven. Obviously, you got a young play caller with Parks Frazier. You at least want to have that old savvy vet in there taking uh, snaps under center if he was healthy enough. And Jeff Saturday made that move uh, literally as quick as he could. And, uh, you know, number one, it came down to executing up front on the offensive mm -hmm. line. If you looked at this team, you know they were underachieving there, especially what you spent there if you're that owner. So I'm sure that those have been conversations between Jeff Saturday and Jim Irsay was about fixing that offensive line. I heard Jeff Saturday yeah. speak uh, yesterday on Pat's show, like, hey, he's spending 80, 85 percent of his time in that offensive room. And sometimes you got to simplify things and guys just got to get it done. Uh, obviously, you know, they're talented enough. 
and they move their line of scrimmage running the ball, protect it, Matt, and when you can protect them, uh, obviously Matt Ryan can make throws and make plays. So, um, Coach Nation, uh, we're, we're buzzing a little bit right now. Can we talk about the scramble? Oh, <laughs> I loved it. I loved every second of it. And it was a lot of seconds. It took forever. <laughs> it took a while, but Matt Ryan <laughs> was trucking along. Uh, it was, what was it, 39 yards? Uh, I, I want to know how many miles per hour he's clocking right there. It, was, it wasn't many. He's definitely not getting a speed ticket, but uh, we needed it. We needed it from everybody. Jonathan Taylor, he looked like he's back. Uh, we haven't seen him look that explosive really since last season. Um, so it, that, that was definitely an exciting fry. You know, a little less of Matt scrambling, a little more of 28 uh, breaking those 60-yard touchdown yeah. runs. But uh, I love I loved what I saw yesterday from my guys. Same. And then there was, a, you know, that was the thing of beauty that we just witnessed, that scramble. And here's another one. This is the Jefferson catch. I mean, I just want you to, as a football player, as, as, as a defender, what are you thinking when you land on the ground but you don't have the ball? You know what? He thought that DB was in great position, had both hands on the ball. He thought, hey, I'm going up and make a play. In retrospect, He's thinking, I know the coach is probably telling him it's fourth and 18, just knock it down, just knock it down. But DBs, we're never trying to hear that. Anytime, any opportunity we have to get an interception, we want to go up there and get it. But Jefferson made one of the most impressive catches I've ever seen in my life in a game. Um, I, I would go as far as say top two or three, you know, it's up there with that Odell catch, but the magnitude of the situation and then going up there with one hand, literally snatching out of another guy's two, uh, very, very impressive play. Uh, he's right up there in the best receiver conversation. Mm. I give the nod to Cheetah right now, but you got Stephon Diggs, you got Justin Jefferson, all those guys are playing some phenomenal. You still play. think you still think Cheetah over Tua for MVP? You know what? I told you, as the the more games that Tua continues to play, at some point, just the nature of the position, he's going to jump Tyreek. I would have to put him above Tyreek right now. So I'm going oh! Patrick Mahomes, Tua, Tyreek, Jalen Hurts. Those are my top four now. Oh, and I, to one I, last I tried night. to warn you about the Josh Allen situation, but we'll get to that another time. Oh, what, what do you mean? What's the Josh Allen situation? No, he, he just, you know, super, super talented. I love how he plays. I love the energy he plays with. I love what he brings to that team. Um, but just situationally, sometimes in, in, in games, you know, you saw it in the Green Bay game, you saw it in the Jet game, you saw it in this past game. Just get too careless uh, with that football. We'll, I, I got a, a good feeling we'll probably see some of those plays a little later on in the show. But uh, Josh Allen just got to do a better job of taking care of the balls and just, um, you know, either throwing it away or tucking and running out of bounds uh, sometimes. Well, you're not wrong. Now, I'm a bad driver, so pick me up and take me to shut down shitty. Oh, I just swore. Yes, I didn't mean to swear. Let's go to shut down city. Oops. What's the thing already? <laughs> First one, get to know the name. Rudy Ford, Green Bay Packers. Obviously, they got an overtime much-needed win, but Rudy Ford showed up and showed out, had two interceptions off of Dak Prescott. This is his first time in shutdown city. So welcome to the city, Woo! Rudy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Next. Now, this guy's been here a lot this year, and five weeks in a row this dude has got an interception. Got another one last night. I know they lost, but five weeks in a row, leading the league in interceptions, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, he is in Shutdown City again. He's been here all he year. Lives he's got there. permanent residence. I love how he's playing the game. A great addition to that Philly secondary. And the mayor, the new mayor of Florida, South Florida, Pompano legend, Patrick oh! Peterson. Still looking for Steve Kime, but he is balling, <laughs> a.k.a. the closer. Got two interceptions yesterday in, in one of the best regular season games I think we've all ever seen. This ending was crazy. But Patrick Peterson, shout out to him. Continue the ball. He is the new mayor of Shutdown City, P2. P2, the mayor of Shutdown. Are you in on the chains thing? I like it. I'm sure at some point it'll get tired, it'll get old, but it, it's cool. It's nothing like those plane rides after victory. You know, every different team has their different things. I saw Heineke with some chains on last night. You saw Pat P iced out, Kurt Cole. I mean, as long as you're winning, everything's cool. As soon as you take an L, that's when it's like, all right, let's just move on from it. Yeah. Uh, but the vibes are high right now, and it's nothing like those plane rides after a nice victory on the road. I would want to sleep. Are you guys crazy? I would just sleep the entire, no, even after a win, I, I would no, sleep. No, sleep, you crazy. You sleep on the way to a game. Okay. Riding back or maybe after a loss. 
But um, on the way back, that adrenaline is still rushing. And it's so hard. It's so hard to get a win. This is seven in a row now for the Vikings, which yeah. is nuts. And they've all, a lot of them have been close games against good teams. So it's hard to get a win. So when you do get that win, you got to enjoy those moments. And you only get, get so many. You know, I'm done now. I'm retired. I'm washed yeah. now. But those are the moments you miss, those locker room moments and then those plane rides home after a good, sweet victory Win. Mark Ingram's on next. He told me last week that he wants Andy Dalton to wear those chains, and I thought that was such a funny image to have uh, all these all these players now are trying to get that chain game on for their uh, for their quarterbacks. So that's not something I need to see. I in fact <laughs> don't ever need to see Andy Dalton shirtless, let alone wearing everyone's chains. I'm just saying. And then like I want a I'm deposit. Good. Like I, like I'm giving you my chance. What do I get your license? Do I get your like I I'm not gonna trust anybody. I'm not trusting. How much do those cost? Uh uh-uh. uh. Pretty nope. penny. Depends on the diamonds, depends on the cut. But, you know, some of them are rookie mistakes. Some of those guys can afford it. But, I mean, everybody, they know where they work. I know where you work. I know where you live. <laughs> I know who writes your checks. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. I can take a nap after I give you my chain. For spe- like, especially oh, Pat Peterson yeah. and Kirk Cousins. I'm sure they can cover the calls. <laughs> I'm like, here, Pat, here's a candy necklace. Here's a ring pop. That's about all I got for my, my playing all. days. <laughs> all right, Darius Butler, we appreciate you so much. You can catch him on the Pat McAfee Show, Breaking It Down, and on the Man to Man podcast. And here he is, Mark. Mark, Ringo, talk to me about those victory plane rides. we got to get you some. Ingram on next. Handing out red cards. Yeah, 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 I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. I swear to my homie that Lee. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah, I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. More than just a guest, he is family. Of course, joining us right now from the Saints facility, Mark Ingram. Good morning. What's up, Kay? How you doing this I'm, morning? I'm a wonderful superstar. Good to see you. As always, we're going to have a lot of fun here. Uh, I know there was a tough loss to the Steelers this past weekend, but you and I are all about positive vibes and manifesting. Positive vibes. Was there anything you saw that was positive that you can carry carry with you to this week? Man, we got a lot of improving to do. We got a lot of uh, soul searching. We always got to look inward, look in the mirror, and not point the fingers, find out what we could do to get better individually and collectively. Um, that's from the coaching staff, that's from the players, that's to everybody involved. We all just have to find ways to be better because what we've done to this point hasn't been good enough. Yeah. So we have to, you know, continue to improve, continue to look inward, continue to hold each other accountable and um, find a way to get this thing, you know, turned around, going in the right direction. Uh, this week it's the Rams. I'm looking at the standings in the NFC South. Y'all are two games back of the Buccaneers. In my fan opinion, that means must win. Is that yep. the sentiment in that locker room this week? Yeah. The, essentially, the playoffs have started right now. It's been must-win for us since a few weeks ago. You know, I mean, when you're one game back, you want to keep winning so you can close that cushion and, you know, hopefully get to the top of your division. The number one goal is always to win the division. So definitely is a must-win. I, I would say that you are pretty accurate in your assumption, Kay. <laughs> Mark, I, I was telling, uh, talking to Darius Butler about this. Every, every week, it was, we're week it's 11 now. I ask you about, about Jameis Winston, <laughs> and I ask you about Andy Dalton and who's starting, and you always find a way to not tell me a freaking single thing. And then Dennis, I, I, I look at the press conferences, I'm listening to Dennis Allen, and he's saying that he, what did he say? He wants to evaluate the position. What is going on with the quarterbacks? Hey, man, I just, <laughs> I line up and play with whoever's under the center. <laughs> you know, that's way above my pay grade. I don't envy having to make those decisions. I love Jay Boo. You know how I feel about Jay Boo. You know how we feel about Jay Boo. Are we going to see the red him? Rifle. I love the rifle. Um, the rifle. I'm just going to hold it down with whoever's running that queue. You know what I mean? That's that's. I, I'm employee number 22, and I, I'm just going to keep it pushing. <laughs> Are you coming back soon? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a lot better. My knee is doing a lot better. I'm, I'm getting a lot of improvement. Um, I'm going to start running this week. And hopefully, you know, got a shot to get back out on that field, you know, within the next week or two. So um, things are going in the right direction and um, trying to get back out there as soon as possible with my guys. All right, well, let's hear it from Mark King. I'm trying to get back on the field. 
They need you because that man, you know, you know what I would do if I were you? Even if I could go this week, I'd be like, I'm good. Aaron Donald out there this week, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm still nah. gonna, I'm gonna take it slow nah. on my way back, no? No, nah, no, nah, we ain't fearing nobody, <laughs> even though he's, you know, he's that guy, but we he's ain't fearing guy. nobody. He's and that I've guy. Had some, and I've had some big games against the Rams with him out there, so. How do you, know you do I mean? that? Hey, you know, the offensive line, they just make a hole for me and I just get through there. <laughs> Teron Armstead's not on your team anymore, though, babe. Oh. I'm giving myself a red card. I'm giving myself a red card. I love my line. You ain't gonna talk about my line like that. <laughs> I love that. The rookies, the rookies coming back, right? The draft pick. Yeah. Tre yep. Trevor should be back soon too. So. You love him. You gotta keep getting healthy. You gotta keep getting healthy. <laughs> All right, I'm giving myself a red card for that. I can't talk about the offensive line. I love it. All right, now let's switch gears <laughs> to something that you are very passionate about. Listen, World Cups are on the corner. You're part owner of the Major League Soccer Team. D oh, the district. DC United. You make the district. That's what we do here. So let's show you some footage that we dug up from last weekend. You tell me whether or not you think it's worthy of a red card or a yellow card. Uh, red for a serious infraction, of course. Yellow for a less serious or fun one. Now let's get to the videos. Marcus Mariota, my friend, against the Falcons. Let's just say he was really trying to convert this third down. Did you see this? Oh, yeah, on his back. <laughs> trying to throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, what do you make of it? Hey, we gonna give we gonna give yellow. You know, we we appreciate effort. We appreciate you know the effort, willing to put it all on the line. But you're clearly <laughs> down here. You're clearly down here, my guy. But um, hey, hey, we 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 applaud the effort, man. Yellow card for Marcus. <laughs> Pass while falling down, yellow card. All right, the Panthers, and we're talking some division-ish stuff right now. The Panthers get the win over the Falcons after the game. Here's Baker Mayfield. I know you saw this. Baker Mayfield <laughs> showing his teammates, I, I guess, some love. What are we doing here? Hey, man, we, ha we, we skull to helmet. Baker, you know, we got to have protect the dome, man. You got to protect the dome. <laughs> you got to protect your chicken. You got to protect your mentals. So like my man Marshawn said, you wasn't protecting your mentals, but maybe you protecting <laughs> the chicken. So we're going to give you a red. You got to give you a red, man. Protect your yeah. head, man. Protect your head, babe. Come on, babe. Why did he, why is he doing that? What is he trying to, I don't understand. Now, I've seen other positions do this type of thing. D-line, O-line, linebackers, like those hammerhead people that are on the field all the yeah. time. But the quarterback, I've never seen the quarterback do that. And I'm not going to do that. And I'm a running back. Yeah. So, babe, we got to protect the mentals. Who was that dude on the Texans that was bleeding from his head when he did it? Remember that? Cush something? What is his name? Yeah, Cushion. Was that Cushion? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I Cushing, it's yeah. just a bad look. It's just a bad look. We're going to give him it's a red tough. card it's and tough. myself for not remembering his name. Okay. Listen, you, you you in a different mentality. You in a different zone out there. It takes yeah. a real, a real, uh, you got to be a little crazy. So, but at the quarterback, you can't be doing that. But that was after the <laughs> game, Mark. It wasn't during, like, hot action. Bull bullets aren't flying. He was, was excited. After... My man's a competitor. Yeah. You know, he's full of fire. And yeah. uh, he was excited for the dub. And I guess he just tried to headbutt a few people. In my head, the game's <laughs> over. I'm tired. I want an IV, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I want to trade jerseys with some legends so I can put it on my wall. And then I want, to, I want like, a Capri Sun and some fruit snacks. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? He, wa he wasn't tired, though. PJ was out there the whole time. Yeah. He wasn't tired. <laughs> That's true. It's true. He wasn't tired. That's a little tired. Yeah. All right, let's talk running backs here. Aaron Jones, big, big night against the Cowboys, finishing this run with an homage to Marshawn Lynch. Your thoughts? That's my dog, Aaron Jones, finishing the run with the whole month. You feel me? Hey, hey, we ain't even giving out no cards. Okay. That's just holding it down. That's just being real. You feel me? <laughs> That's being real. Touchdown, big play, Aaron Jones all day. You know how we do it, man. Shout out to my boy, toting that thing, toting that rock, getting the package that dub. Man. You love Aaron and Jones. I love Aaron Jones and I love Marshawn too, so it ain't no foul on this play. You yeah. gotta show you gotta show love and pay homage to the OGs who have come before you. And he did that with a big play. So Pro protect your chicken, your mentals, and your dome, like Marshawn Lynch. Big love on that play. <laughs> RB love all day. It's a red card if <laughs> RB hates on the RB. So it's all RB love. All RB love, always. Okay, finally, uh, I, I don't know if you saw this. You were obviously you've been busy. There are some things caught on camera 
you can't unsee and I had to see it, so now I need you to see it. This is Mike Pereira, the rules analyst for Fox. Do you see what he, what, what? This is caught on live television. What's he doing? <laughs> Just like the little tongue thing? Yeah, what do you mean, little, what tongue, do you mean thing? little tongue thing? Like it's not, are you joking? You're gonna say that's nothing? Bro, red car, my dog don't, don't know how to hold his mannerisms on TV. Like, you know what I mean? Like, red car like who, all day, what baby. is he signaling? Do we have the backstory to this? We don't know? Who is, who is mean, he signaling to? I don't know what he has going on, man. Just like some of the calls that the refs be making, we don't know what the rules and analysis is doing either. It's all, it's just from A to Z. I love the that you took it. Thing. You're amazing. You're like, yeah. it's just like the ref getting in, in front of Curtis Samuel on that touchdown. I don't know. We're giving a red card. Pereira, <laughs> red card. I, you made me uncomfortable. He's when you're ejected. making me He's uncomfortable. Ejected. He's out. You're out of the game. You, you got are people out of the feeling game. all unnecessary on TV. Like, it, yeah. you know what I mean? You got just got green lawed. You're out. And it's, it's, yeah, it might out. be controversial, but we, you're out. All right, we have one more last one to show you, show you Mark. I know it's so weird. Um, okay, here's the backstory. It's, you know, I, we work on this show, and my producer, the guy who was, you know, in my earpiece talking to me. The a whole great show. show, by the way. I love Thank your you. show. Your whole team, the producers, everybody. The, the Up and Adam show is, is, is top of the line. Uh, you're the best. Okay, so Conrad is a boy named Conrad, right? A man named Conrad, sorry. <laughs> and he's our producer. And like, look, he's a, he's a perfectly wonderful, I would say handsome. Do we have a video of him? He's a handsome fella. Yeah, he's having a good time. He's a great guy. So this is, you know, and he's, and he's single. He's out in these streets in LA, a single guy. Nice head of lettuce, like nice head of hair on Conrad Company. And so he texted me yesterday. Last night he goes to get a haircut. And in his defense, he did. Did not request this, but this is Lord, Lord Jesus, it's a fall. Who did this to you, man? They put the cereal bowl on top of your head and just took the one guard, just like, oh my goodness. My dog is single out here. And and oh, okay. He Mark. looked like a little soccer player though. It's kind of like a soccer you? cut. Mark, hold on, hold on. You look like you're on DC United. This 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 is a targeting penalty. Unnecessary <laughs> roughness to the head or neck. <laughs> But well, who did this to you? Is the question. I don't. I who don't do we know. need to go see? I don't know who did this. Look at this. Look at you this went bag. To super cuts. <laughs> you went to supercuts. You went to supercuts. Nothing wrong. If supercuts wants to sponsor our show, we are listening. Let's not talk. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. If supercuts wants to sponsor me, I, I can get a cut too. So no, we were talking about you. We we were giving Mark credit for. That's why we wanted to talk to Mark. Mark's hair is always looking looking sharp, and that's yours. Listen, I never grew, I never grew my hair out, so I'm trying to like let the hair go. You've never seen me with my hair this long, okay? And no, like I, I usually got, I like I usually it. got the waves, the yeah. low cut, but I'm, I'm gonna see if the hair could grow and see if I could do something with it. I will say, I will. This maybe is, I can get the hair. Maybe no, I can get the style no, like you, my no, dog. No, this is the <laughs> worst. <laughs> this is the worst haircut I literally have ever seen. Okay, so, um, okay, let's you, go. Yeah. Hey, it's not, it's not as bad as what they do to some of the rookies in the NFL. Okay, locker. so talk I'm to me. Tell you that. Like that, he reminds like, me of Tim Tebow. That fryer cut. He reminds me of that. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's not good. At least okay. they didn't give him. At least they didn't give him the Mick Patchy. Like you know, what I mean, the, the patches everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, the, <laughs> no, not, that's I, not. I would have taken that. You need to cue ball the whole thing. I need you to be Brad Pitt Fight Club. Like shave it, shave the whole thing. <laughs> Here's the deal. We have some. Oh! Uh, do we have? Do we have uh, pictures of this oh! stuff? Okay. So this is Tebow. You there? There's that. And then do we do the San Diego Padres guy? Yeah, there he is. Oh, you could get they a side did Tebow so dirty. I know. That was dirty. Uh, I hear they're casting for another Dumb and Dumber movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Did you go hey. into the barbershop and say, hey, hey, uh, hey, lady, could I get the Mark Davis? Oh. Oh, my goodness. The Mark Davis. Yeah. That's it. And that there we go. That boy got that fresh lineup. So, so we're doing this? Don't hit on Mark Davis. Don't hit on the Mark. <laughs> no, that, boy, I'm not. that boy Mark got that fresh lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Are we giving him a red card? Yeah. Mark, here's yeah, here's why he's getting a red card because how do you sit in the chair at a barbershop or at a hairstylist and how do you how are you letting like how can you not say excuse me what are you doing and it's because it's some woman running her ha fingers through your hair and the next thing you know you look like this uh, they, and then I give him a tip afterwards you know and he I, tipped I, I, I her. Give, him, give him a tip afterwards I know right right <laughs> you gave him a tip I gave him one dollar one dollar fifteen percent Mark can you give two red cards for one situation is that possible. The barber gets two red cards. He's out for the next game. And you get a red card for allowing this to happen. 
The mirror is right there. I know he showed the mirror to you. No. You let him do it. They, you allowed this to happen. They, they, they turned me around. I was no, not facing no, the mirror. No. I, I, after 15 seconds, oh, Mark, you know what this a bad is, haircut no. can be like. This Just, is self-inflicted. This is 15 like... 15 seconds in. No, no. I knew it. No, no, no. Uh, Mark, we love you. You're, go ahead. Over here, they say, they say you're either coaching it or allowing it. And you allowed that to happen. <laughs> you allowed that to happen, my friend. No, you're right. A lot of men allow this to happen. There's an epidemic of men getting awful haircuts, not saying anything, not speaking Listen, up. And hey, it needs to I end. will not get a haircut until a barber that I know will, will come and cut my hair. I will not get a haircut. I will, like, fly him out. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll chop this thing up, but I'm not letting somebody cut my hair and had me looking all ugly going out in public. I'm but not, do you I'm think, uh, last one for you, do you think I, he should let me shave the rest of it off on the TV show on Thursday? Come on. Why not? We might yeah. as well just start over. Now, you know what? Right, start fresh. <laughs> just start fresh, right? Might and that's well the kind of positivity over. we love from Mark Ingram playing a little red card, yellow card. <laughs> Have a good day, Mark. Feel better. Thank you for the smile. Thanks for being a good sport, buddy. Of course. I'm love shaving your head. I'm doing that. Hey, keep that hair right, my guy. It's the worst haircut I've ever seen in my entire life. Show is this the worst haircut you've ever seen? We will show you, of course, on Twitter. Maybe again to end the show. Uh, we got at Game Changer saying Mark Ingram is the goat. What was he saying? Mick Patchy. Mark Ingram just says words that don't exist, but he like pretends that I'm supposed to know that they exist. It's just Mark Ingram slang. I love it. Yeah, we love it. He is the goat. We'll be back with Shams, another goat. What a treat. We welcome in senior lead NBA insider for the Athletic and Stadium, also a member of the FanDuel family, serving as co host of the Run the Back NBA show. <gasps> Shams is here. Hi, Shams. <laughs> Hi, I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you guys having me. I love the set. It has such a homey Thanks. feel. Yeah, so that's appreciate a, you guys having me on. One way to put it. That's great. Appreciate what are you? How, are you enjoying your time here? I am. It's fun to be in studio. We haven't done in studio. This is our first week in studio, so it's been fun. You know, Chandler Parsons, Eddie Gonzalez, Michelle Beadle. Yeah. We've been taping every morning. It's been early mornings. You know. Did you, you guys hang out like last night or anything? We did. We hung out at Chandler Parsons' house last night. <laughs> what in did Malibu. you do at so, Chandler Parsons' uh, house? We literally just had dinner, watched games, uh -huh. and uh, got to know each other. Did he have so, a chef? Fun. He had a chef, yes. And what did you eat? I don't know if I'm giving up too much information. No, 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 Chandler. Chicken, uh, some fish. So it was diverse. It was a very diverse uh, palette of food. And you just, you didn't think like, let me invite Kay? Or oh you weren't my like, God. let me Oh, don't do me like that. Don't put it on me. She wants to go. You I know, really... I would have invited you. It wasn't my home. Oh, so, oh, so yeah, Chandler yeah, didn't yeah. want me to come. Okay, thanks, Beetle <laughs> and Chandler. I'm mad at you guys now. Uh, okay, so yes, you guys are here live in LA. Now, before we get going on this, um, that we getting to know you thing, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with you. I'm I appreciate you. I'm obsessed with you. I got, oh, my God, don't, I'll faint. Um, I got to get your thoughts on this guy's haircut because it's tragic. I, We're all making fun of it. So I just met Conrad. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to cut him some slack. You know, you can't, well, the one thing you can't do is cheat on your barber because your barber knows you best. And what I heard, I don't, you know, sources on the street say that uh, Conrad cheated on his barber. I did. So. Is that true? Confirmed. That uh, is not something that I would advise as someone that, you know, I get my haircut very, very frequently as well, so well, I would not advise that. I mean, that. he's monogamous, he's loyal. Is it is the best person there. He's loyal to his barber. Okay, uh, a question for you. NBA known for famous iconic hairstyles. Rodman, of course, the dye jobs, the bird man, mohawk, the Dr. J. Fro. How does the Conrad stack up? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely unique. Uh, not much of a fade there. I think. Do they, do they got this on 2K? Can you get this on 2K, Sean? I, I think that that's he like a. He loves the attention, doesn't he? I don't, I don't know what that is. That's like Gordon Hayward. Did you guys see Gordon Hayward's haircut the other day? Uh, by the way, Gordon Hayward used to have an amazing fade. Like, definitely uh, iconic and very something that I tried to model myself after at times, but. Yeah, that's very unique. Let's get to know very Shams. Unique. Here's what we're going to do we're gonna give you some prompts and give us quick details. What is your most irrational fear? Go. My most irrational fear, oh my God. Mine's coyotes lately, what's yours? <laughs> Put me on the spot. Um, taking naps during the day. Oh, because you're gonna miss something? Yeah, that's- That makes me or, so or sad Or being for off Wi-Fi. Like not having <gasps> Wi-Fi on planes, like I become really irritable, start losing it. You, you go around I, that PJ I'm, life, I'm, don't I'm, even talk no, to me. No. Okay, what is your greatest strength? My greatest strength, I think discipline, honestly. Like I feel like I'm a very structured, disciplined person. I think it's because I have to, I have a very regimented lifestyle. So, yeah. You know, so I, I like that. I, I like that about me. Uh, biggest risk you've ever taken? Biggest risk I've ever taken? Um, not caring about school when I was in school because I, I, I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. Driving to Milwaukee, Indiana to cover games and like missing out on social life, missing out on school life. So, yeah. um, so when we have kids, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. When you have kids, are you going to encourage? I know, obviously. <laughs> but we, you're going to encourage, like, just follow your dream. Like, you, that follow would be your, your advice to everyone out there. Follow your dreams. And at the end of the day, you have to be able to experience it. I think school is definitely very important. I wanted to be yeah. the first one out of my family in my generation to That's graduate. Amazing. So that was very important for me. But 
you have to be able to go through the experiences of, of whatever you want to do, whatever uh, you're passionate about. Friends ask you for advice about what? A relationship building and also how can I get a job? That, those are yeah? like the two questions. You know, in, in the industry that I'm, I'm working in, but like it's, there's no like easy path, right? Like I think there's, there was a template of, of like probably people that came before me of like, okay, you work as a high school newspaper, you know, writer and then college and then pros. Like for me, I didn't really have that traditional path. So it's hard for me to answer that question, but I think just find your voice. Um, that's like the biggest advice I give people. That's really good advice. You guys can tweet questions at the Up and Adam Show. Um, most controversial opinion is? Oh my God. It's hard. Mine's that there's I'm gonna, no bad I'm, I'm gonna tie it back. I'm not a big naps person, so I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't like naps. I'm, I'm like anti naps, but I have a lot of friends. There, there's a lot of studies that you should, you should nap and, yeah. and take, take time out of your day to like rest. How many up, hours recharge. did you get a night? Um, anywhere from three, sometimes. How six. many last night after this Chandler Parsons that nutritional meal you guys had is wholesome family fun? Well, you got to you got to remember we got to wake up early for the, for our seven yeah. a.m. show. You got to wake up early yeah. too. So. How many hours did you get last night? Three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> the amount of concealer under my eyes would be <laughs> insane. Okay. Mine too. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, if loving this is wrong, what does that mean? If loving this is wrong, what does that prompt? I'm sorry, I'm not on. What does that mean? If loving this is wrong, I don't want to be right. If loving what is wrong, I don't want to be right. These are hard. Oh man, is this like in a what is this? Is this like I in a relationship? Know. Is this like this is getting weird? I already told them we're having kids together. This is a okay. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think snuggling. I think if what if you love snu like, snuggling, like I love snuggling. Yes. Oh, that's the best that's thing a, I've ever That's a very heard. key thing. That's a very key thing. Oh in a my gosh, if loving this is wrong, I don't want to be right. Snuggling, it's my favorite. Okay, the dorkiest thing about you is, ten seconds. I mean, I'm like I, I feel like I'm a nerd for sure. So that's probably it. Like, that's the dorkiest thing. I'm a nerd. Uh, and biggest date fail quickly. I'm a nerd. I already said it. I already said it on your show. It's like when I, when I left uh, for 30 minutes on a date to, to take a phone call. I know. Call. And then, but you like broke news. I know, but I didn't get another date with her. So it didn't work out for me. Well, you're an idiot, woman. You're, you're, the, you're the Conrad haircut of dates. All right, we'll be back tomorrow on Up and Adams. Watch, run it back with Shubs. <laughs>